Morning Taste Buds and happy Father's Day Eve. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein and tomorrow is that one day a year that we honor dear old dad. Join me today as I make a menu that says thanks for what he's done for us and the other 364. It's Father's Day Fair today on SoFlo Taste. This is South Florida. It's where I live and work. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. South Florida is more than sun, sand, and sea. It's a lifestyle of fashion, sound, culture, and of course, food. Food with taste from all over the world. Join me as we celebrate the food of South Florida and the people who love it. Join me as we experience SoFlo Taste. Taste Buds, welcome to my Father's Day show and welcome to SoFlo Taste here in the Goya Kitchen at JA World in Coconut Creek. Last year, many of us couldn't give dear old dad a Father's Day befitting him. Many of us couldn't even be with our fathers. So let's hope this year is better. And if I have anything to do with it, it will be. So let's get to giving Pop his day and let's get to cooking. The first thing I wanted to make, because my father loves this, my braised short ribs. Now, I've been making this for a long time. I have changed the recipes so many times, and it is my first time getting short ribs from Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. You know, they're my dear friends, and I use them a lot here on the show, and we adore them. Um, by the way, they I, when I drove up, I couldn't get over it. The parking lot is redesigned. It now makes curbside delivery so much more convenient. There are stores in Hollywood at 4191 State Road 7 um, and just go to DelawareChicken.com or call 954-983-6831 to place your order and make sure you tell them I sent you. So what this is, this is kind of what they call an English style. So it's a single bone on the bottom. Um, you see that? And so this weighs one pound. This is one pound of bone and meat. So to me, once this shrinks down, the bone is removed. This is good for one person for a really hearty main course. I can only eat half of one. These have been kind of cured and I salt and I pepper them and I let them sit in the fridge uncovered overnight and it develops a dry crisp kind of coat to it so that when you sear it, it's a nice dry sear. It also allows to kind of start the flavor process of it. So what we're going to do, we're going to sear them. They don't really need much fat, so I'm really just going to add like a teaspoon, just a teaspoon of some whatever, grapeseed oil, canola oil, whatever you've got. Even olive oil is fine. You don't want to go too hot, but you do want it to smoke, just like it's doing now. And you don't want to crowd the pan. Make sure fat side is down. Whatever fits in your pan is what you should cook. So I think in my pan that I have here, only three bones will fit. And you really want to get a good golden crisp color and texture all along the rib. So you really want both sides of the rib, but primarily, obviously, the fat cap is really what we need to get golden, golden brown. And already the smell of the meat is just glorious. So have a little plate or a little pan ready because after we sear the meat, we're gonna need room to sear the vegetables and to caramelize them as well. The caramelization of the vegetable is just as important, okay, almost as important as the caramelization of the meat. All right, so when you're caramelized all over, you put these aside for just a couple moments. And this is simple mirepoix. And mirepoix is onion, celery, and carrot. Mainly onion, though. I would say about almost two-thirds of it is onion, yellow onion. So to this, I'm going to add a few whole garlic cloves, one whole star anise. I love, I love the smell of star anise and I think it's delicious in the rib. Just about like four to five peppercorns whole and the herb bundle. And then finally, just a couple of pieces of orange peel. Try not to get the pith, which is the white part because that's the, the bitter part. So 
when you go in there, don't push too hard because you'll definitely get pits. Just go kind of softly around. And you'll just want a couple of pieces of peel. It would really give a really great fragrance to your broth. So like I told you, I had already heavily salted and peppered the rib, so I am not gonna salt this at all. To me, it has enough. And you can always fix the broth later and add more salt, but we really don't wanna go any saltier because this has salt, it's going back in here, it's going to season our broth. Like Julia Child always said, and most chefs always say, when you use wine in your recipes, you want it to be a drinking wine. You don't want it to be a cooking wine. That actually has a lot of sodium in it. So I love a nice, heady red wine, not too fruity, dry, in my reduction. So once your vegetables are caramelized, add in the wine. All right, we're gonna let this red wine reduce almost all the way down. Come right back so I can show you what to do next. And of course, I have more recipes for you. Now, even if you don't see me wearing a mask, I'm the only one who isn't. But I'm keeping my distance from the rest of the Local 10 crew. And trust me, as soon as the cameras are off, my mask is on. Get vaccinated, SoFlo. Come right back. There's still more from the Goya Kitchen at JA World and Michelle. Hi, it's Melinda, reminding you it's not too late to visit one of these edible arrangement stores to get a unique Father's Day edible treat for dear old dad. Everything from fresh fruit arrangements, gift sets, and my favorite, chocolate dipped fruit, including the fatherly chocolate mustache. Perfect for the dads in your life. So, happy Father's Day from SoFlo Taste and your nearby edible arrangement store. Now, back to Michelle. Welcome back to SoFlo Taste. As we always are, we're here at the wonderful JA World in Coconut Creek, a great place dedicated to our kids. For more information, go to jasouthflorida.org or call 954-979-7100. Now back to the food. All right, everyone, our red wine has reduced. I will now add beef stock or broth or chicken stock or broth. Then we put our seared ribs into the pan and I will just give you one little piece of advice. You will be wrapping this in foil and putting this into the oven and it will take three hours. Now in those three hours your liquid might reduce too low in the pan. Um, so if it comes down more than halfway I say just pour a little more liquid, cover it up again and keep on going. And what you want is for it to be incredibly tender. And let me show you what you're looking for. So when you stick a paring knife into your ribs, it should go right in like that. No, no give at all, okay? You just want it crazy tender. Now it's up to you if you wanna serve it on the bone or not. I'm going to actually take these ribs and place them on a sheet because what you're gonna to wanna to do is strain the vegetables and of course herbs out of the broth. Be careful because these are really soft and the meat will just slide. Look at this, it slides right off the bone. It's just gorgeous. All right, so let's place these over here for now. So I have a strainer set into a little pan right here, a little sauce pot. I'm gonna pour, now it's up to you. If you wanna serve it with all these little bits of vegetables, they're very soft, but I wanted it to be just a little bit more quote unquote refined. So I'm gonna put that saucepan right on the burner for just a second while we start showing you how to plate this beautiful rib. If you hate kale, uh, then you can use sauteed spinach, Swiss chard is delicious. It's pretty much up to you what you want to use. And like I said, you can serve it on or off the bone. It's up to you. I mean, look at that. This thing is about to pop right off. So if you wanted to take it off the bone, um, just shake it a couple times and it will come right off of there. So place your rib down in the center of a beautiful plate and then take some of this gorgeous reduction and pour it right over 
and look how beautiful that is. I think it's just such a lovely dish. So here are our braised short ribs over some sauteed kale. So the next dish I wanted to make for you is a perfect side dish for anything. In fact, I think I would eat this as a main dish too. We have twice baked potatoes today. So what we have here, we placed potatoes, and, and this is like against everything I have learned about baking potatoes. Normally, I wrap up whole potatoes in their jackets with uh, foil and I bake them but that's too moist for a twice baked potato. So what you do is you place a whole Idaho or russet potato on a little parchment paper like this. You heavily salt it, a little touch of butter or oil, and then you put it in your oven and you bake it until they're very, very, very tender. And then you take the top, I would say like quarter or third off of the top and then you scoop out the inside of the potato, but making sure that you leave, I would say that that's about a quarter of an inch of potato all around the inside to you know, make it kind of safe. So let's scoop out. I would just kind of take a big old spoon and spoon just exactly what you want to remove from the potato and the rest is left in there and it makes sure that the potato obviously keeps its shape. So we are not just gonna make twice baked potatoes, we're making twice baked cheddar potatoes today because dad deserves it, right? So here I have the mash right here. Now, you could do one of two things. You can rice it, you can put it in a ricer if you want a little bit more of a refined mash, or you can just grab a whisk and a little bit of hot cream. I'll pour a little bit of hot cream right over the top of them but you don't want to add too much because you don't want this to be too loose. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of salt in there. Not much butter because we do have the cheddar, so this isn't even a tablespoon worth of butter in there. Very, very low heat because the potato can burn and go ahead and whisk that together. So like I said, you can use a ricer if you want to. It would be a little bit more of a refined mash. You can use a masher, but I kind of like a whisk. It's an easy way to just bring it all together. So at this point, I do have the cream and the butter in there. Go ahead and add cheddar. Now this is a grated cheddar. You can grate your own cheddar if you want to, or you can buy it already done. All right, the rest of the way, I'm gonna beat in with a rubber spatula. Come right back, and I will show you how to make these absolutely stunning. SoFlo Home Project is next, right after SoFlo Taste. Welcome back to SoFlo Taste and Father's Day 2021. So nice to have you with us. We are in the midst of making something delicious. So this is twice baked potatoes. I've already baked and emptied out some of those potatoes, made a beautiful cheddar mash with cheddar, a little tiny touch of cream and butter, and of course, just a little bit of salt. So I'm just finishing mixing these together, and I'm going to let you do with this as you wish. You can either spoon it into the potatoes or you can get a little fancy and put this into a pastry bag, which I have here. We always set up a pastry bag in some kind of a container. This here is a, what's called a quart container, which you'd find a lot of takeout soups in. So I'm adding this very cheesy mash into the pastry bag and it will be somewhat warm. You can let it cool a little bit, but you don't want it to get cold because it just loses its gorgeous creamy texture. Scoop all that up and I do have a star tip on this. You don't necessarily have to have a tip on your bag, but I thought I'd go a little bit old school and do a star tip. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fill up the potatoes it is quite warm, and I don't know if I'll be able to fill all the potatoes. This is interesting. I think we might just get five. So that's a good thing to learn is that we need to bake 
a couple more potatoes to have enough filling to really fill these bad boys up. I'm not going to do the sixth. All right, so I'm going to go right into the oven. And we're going to let those set for about 10 to 15 minutes. All right, so moving on, my dad and my husband both equally love apple crisps. So now that we have so many beautiful apples, basically all year round now, why not make a delicious apple crisp? And so I did just that. I added all kinds of different apples into the filling uh, to have different, not only flavors, but also textures and balance of different tartness and sweetness. I've actually never made it with dried cherries before. And I saw them at the market and I kind of got a little inspired. So I decided to add in uh, a good package and a half of dried cherries. And to that, I'm gonna be adding uh, a little bit of sugar, just white sugar in the fill, and uh, the juice of a lemon. So there's one half, and then the other half. Because I do have some tart apples in there, and the cherries are a little tart, but the lemon really makes a difference. Just makes it so much more kind of fresh tasting. It's just a little bit of a vanilla extract, and finally, after we mix just a little bit, you have to add something to thicken. Good old cornstarch, which is what I did. I went very classic in this. So as it cooks, you'll want that kind of gooey, delicious juice, nice and thick. And I don't think a cobbler is done until the juices start running out, by the way. All right, once that's mixed, let's go ahead and start on the topping, my favorite. We've got oats, old-fashioned oats, some flour, both colors of sugar, light brown and white, and of course, butter. So real quickly, to make the crust, uh, you take your sugars and your oats and your flour, and you basically just mix that up really well. So you wanna make sure that everything is really, really well combined and mixed before adding any butter to it. I've got little pieces of sugar in there. So I'm using my fingers because it's for my family, but there's really no better way of working in the butter than your actual fingers because you do have a little heat from your hands. And so to really work it in, what you're doing is you're pressing the butter into the flour and sugar mixture in the oats thus eventually getting a beautiful crumb topping. So I'll tell you what, why don't you come back? By the time you do, all this butter will definitely have been worked into this to make a beautiful dough and my hands will be washed so that we can celebrate all the food that will be coming out of the oven and I can show you some little surprises that I have in store for those potatoes in there. So hurry up and come right back. Welcome to SoFlo Taste and our Father's Day show. We are pulling things out of the oven, putting things in the oven. We're all over the place, but everything smells so good and it's so yummy in here today. I'm so excited. So look at the crisps. This is what they will look like before they go in the oven. I really like them to be very tall because once they bake and a lot of the apples soften, they will begin to uh, lower down into the bottom of those little pans, okay? So, like I had told you, I did use a different pan at my house to make this. So let me show you how that came out. There's my beautiful crisp. And then, of course, our five out of six <laughs> cheesy double baked potatoes. Let's go ahead and Put those on a little dish and show how beautiful. See how they've kind of caramelized on the top? I think three is good. So look at all these toppings that we have that can go with all this stuff. I have a little bit of extra cheese, which is always a good thing for those that love cheesy potatoes. 
Of course, we've got some sliced chives right over the top as well. And then, of course, a side of some sour cream and then bits of bacon are never, ever a bad thing for these. Just delicious. What a great Father's Day. And look how gorgeous that is. Yay! So thanks, Taste Buds, for watching today. I love our weekends together. Next week, I'll be wrapping up some falafels. I'll give you my recipes for some of my favorite flavorful fritters. Next week on SoFlo Taste. Up next on Local 10 is SoFlo Home Project. Joining me now is its host, design expert, Elena Capra. Hey, Elena, what are you doing today on SoFlo Home Project? Hi, Michelle, good morning. So today we are exploring a home 500 feet up in the sky. Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, we take a look at one of the largest condos here in South Florida. Thank you, my dear. We'll be watching so my taste buds. Please be smart, be safe, and be well, and I'll see you next week. Mwah. Goodbye and good taste. Whatever she makes for me is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Poppy. Happy Father's Day, Daddy.